Every time you swipe your account on Loyalty Card at OK, you get another reason to celebrate. Cash back, bonus savings, plus automatic entry to win your share of 250,000 cash back when you buy any participating product in the OK Count On Cash Back competition. These great deals are also worth celebrating, and you'll find even more in store. Save, swipe, and win with OK. Owners you can count on. Wow, what a run. Yemen Son from inside his own half has scored. <laughs> He tries a shot. Lionel Messi celebrates that. This is the league we want to watch. Where does football go from here? Live sport is coming back. Reconnect to DSTV and get an upgrade on us. ShopRite has always been here for you. And our promise to bring you low prices on what you need most will never change. Get two kilos Nam milk or Maere assorted, only $34.99 each. And 175 grams Dettol bath soap, just $10.99. Only at ShopRite. One stop, one safer shop. This broadcast is made possible by the Capricorn Group. See if we can do the stoichiometry lesson by recording it. Okay, um, I just want to recap what we said the other day. Uh, we said basically that when we have one mole of a substance, it's simply a quantity. It's a very large quantity, but it's just a quantity. All right. Then we said that if we have the relative atomic mass of an element in grams. For example, the relative atomic mass of calcium is 40. So if I have 40 grams of calcium, I will have one mole of that element or substance. And then we said that if you have the relative formula mass of a compound in grams, for example, we have a formula carbon dioxide. The formula mass for carbon dioxide is 12 plus 2 times 16, which is 44. So if we have 44 grams of carbon dioxide, I will have one mole of that substance. Okay. Then I say to you that when we have a balanced chemical equation, the balancing figures remember one is implied over there, we just don't show the one, gives me the ratio in which the number of moles of elements will or substances will react with each other. So I know from this balanced equation that two moles of hydrogen will always react with one mole of oxygen and it will give me two moles of water. Okay. Um, we said that when we have a balanced chemical equation, if we look at it in terms of masses, the mass on the reagent side must equal the mass on the product side. All right. Um, the formula that we use for calculating moles or for stoichiometrical calculations, number of moles is mass over relative atomic mass or molecular mass. Remember the um, triangle, number of moles is N, mass in grams over molecular or relative atomic mass. Remember the molecular masses or the relative atomic masses, we get them from the periodic table. Then the next formula we have over here, number of moles, uh, sorry, 
If I draw the triangle, number of moles is equal to number of particles over Avogadro's number 6.022 times 10 to the power 23. All right. We don't use this one that much in calculations. Then when we have solutions, all right, like acids and bases, then we work with a concentration. And I said to you, concentration is given as moles per decimeter cubed. All right, so when we have calculations containing concentrations, we use this formula. Number of moles is concentration times volume. Remember, the triangle also works with that one. Uh, number of moles is concentration times volume. And the last one is when we work with gases, okay? We know that one mole of any gas will have a volume of 24 cubic decimeters at room temperature and pressure. And once again, remember the triangle for this one, number of moles is volume over 24. Please remember that this volume over here is volume of a gas, okay? Not liquid volume, but gas volume. So you mustn't confuse the formula. Okay, uh, there we just had the formula the other day, and we had a look at the equation with ammonia, and I want to start off with these calculations. I'll do them from the beginning because the internet broke up last time. So let's see how we can get on with this. Okay, so I've put them together with the types of formula. I'll do some mixed examples in a moment, all right? So when we use the formula, if they give us a mass, mass over molecular mass or mass over uh, relative atomic mass. So calculate the number of moles in 40 gram calcium metal. Now the relative atomic mass for calcium is 40. So the formula says mass which I've been given, divided by the relative atomic mass. So in this case, it's going to be 40 divided by 40 will give me one mole. All right. Now, I'm not going to do all of those again. I'm going to carry on. I'm going to skip a few. You can try doing those on your own time. And I'm going to do this one over here as well because it becomes slightly more complicated. Now we don't have an element. Here we have a compound, a formula unit. Remember, water is H2O. So now it says calculate the number of moles in 60 grams of water. Our formula is still the same. Number of moles is mass over molecular mass, all right? The mass that they've given us is 60 grams. So now we have to work out the molecular mass for water. We know the relative atomic mass of hydrogen is one, and we have two of them over there, plus oxygen has a relative atomic mass of 16, so water has a mass of 18. So I have 60 divided by 18, will equal 60 divided by 18 is equal to 3.3, 3.3 recurring moles. Okay. Here's another one with water. Let's do that one as well. Number of moles, we have 9 grams of water. So mass over molecular mass gives me 9 over, remember we worked out the molecular mass of water over there is 18, so I have 0 0.5 moles of water. Okay. Uh, yeah, they've still got calculations, number of moles. Um, if they give us a mass, remember you need the formula unit. Over here it's just calcium metal. You can do those calculations. Um, and now I want to do this one again. The question says, 
if three moles of an unknown element, we don't know which element we have, has a mass of 69 grams, determine the relative atomic mass. Now, we know three moles of an unknown substance has got a mass of 69 grams. Now, we must figure out the relative atomic mass of this element. Well, that's quite easy, actually. If we have three moles and we know the mass of three moles is 69 grams, what would the mass of one mole be? Because it's a simple ratio. Three moles has a mass of 69 grams. So one mole will have what mass? So we go one mole divided by three times 69. So it would be uh, 23 grams. All right, that's just a ratio. Now, using a different formula, remember the first calculations we did now, we used the formula mass over molecular or relative atomic mass. Now, these calculations that follow over here, we are working with a volume of gases Okay, and what must you remember when we work with gases? We must remember that one mole of any gas, one mole of any gas at room temperature and pressure will always have a volume of 24 decimeters cubed. So, when we need to calculate the number of moles of gases, there we have our formula, volume of the gas over 24 cubic decimeters. Remember, here's a bit of a catch, because if we are dividing with decimeters cubed over here, we must also have the volume in cubic decimeters. All right. All right, so what do we need to know? At room temperature, normal atmospheric pressure, one mole of any gas will have a volume of 24 cubic decimeters because it's one mole, it will contain so many particles. All right. So let's have a look. Here we have an equation where nitrogen reacts with hydrogen to form ammonia. All right, this is the Haber process, if you recognize it. So now we need to balance the equation. Two nitrogens, one nitrogen, so I will probably need two. But now I have got six hydrogens, so over here I will need a three. So my balancing ratio is one to three, to two. In other words, one mole of nitrogen gas will react with three moles of hydrogen and it will form two moles of ammonia. Now they say, what volume of ammonia will be produced if we use 500 cubic decimeters of nitrogen and they say it reacts with excess Hydrogen excess means there's lots of it. We don't have to bother with how much there is. There's more than enough. Okay, so we want to know how much ammonia will we get when we use 500 decimeters cubed of nitrogen. Okay, now to be able to do this calculation, we need to know what is the ratio of nitrogen to ammonia. Okay, and from the balanced equation, we know that one mole of nitrogen will react and it will form two moles of ammonia. Okay, so now we need to go and figure out how many moles do we have over here. The formula, Number of moles is volume uh, is volume over 24. What is the volume? 
500 and we have to divide by 24 and we get an answer uh, 500 divided by 24 equals 20.83 20 20.83 moles of ammonia all right so now we have 20.83 moles of ammonia and what does our ratio tell us 20.83 moles of nitrogen will react with how many moles of ammonia now we know the ratio is one mole to two moles so there's our calculation 20 0.83 divided by 1 times 2 will give me the number of moles over there. So that times 2 is going to be the answer is 41.6 recurring moles. But that's the number of moles of ammonia. What do we want? We want the volume. So the formula, volume, let's do it in a different color. We're looking for the volume over there. The volume is going to be number of moles times 24. What is the number of moles? 41.6 times 24. And that will give me an answer of 999.99 decimeters cubed. All right, so if we have 500 cubic decimeters, it will react with, well, if I rounded off 1,000 cubic decimeters of ammonia. Let's have a look at another one. The next formula. Now, if they give us a solution, then we use the formula, number of moles is concentration times volume. Remember, the unit for concentration is mole per cubic decimeter. So, all moles or all volumes must be converted to cubic decimeters. Remember, this is not gases, but liquid solutions. Okay. So, here's just a simple example. If I have 40 grams of sodium hydroxide and I add it to one cubic decimeter of water, in other words, there's my beaker and it contains one decimeter cubed of water and I go and I add 40 grams into it and I stirred it up, what concentration will I have? The formula says number of moles is concentration times volume, so number of moles is concentration times volume so if I'm looking for concentration it's going to be number of moles divided by volume now uh, we want to know concentration number of moles over volume now can you see that we have got a volume but do we have number of moles no we've got a mass but can we get number of moles from a mass? The answer is yes. So when I want to work out how many moles of sodium hydroxide I have, then I have number of moles is mass over formula mass. All right? Let's just do that in a different color. Otherwise, we'll get mixed up with which ones we're busy with. Okay, so I want to know how many moles of sodium hydroxide have I got? Number of moles is mass over formula mass. This is equal to 40. Now what's the formula mass for sodium hydroxide? Sodium has a mass of 23 and hydroxide is um, oxygen and hydrogen. The formula is NaOH. Sodium has a mass of 23, oxygen 16, hydrogen 1. So we have 24 plus 16 is 40. So divided by 40 gives me 1 mole. So 
If I have, if we now go back to this calculation, I now have number of moles. I know I have one mole, and what is the volume? One decimeter cube. So my answer is one mole per decimeter cubed. All right. Let's have a look at this calculation over here. We're still working with sodium hydroxide. Remember, sodium hydroxide, the molecular mass is 23 plus 16 plus 1 is equal to 40. Now, this time we have 20 grams of sodium. All right. And we are going to dissolve it in 500 centimeter cubed water. So now we have two problems in this calculation. The formula that we are going to use is going to stay the same. We are going to use concentration is equal to number of moles divided by volume. Now, we can work out the number of moles, all right? I'm going to do it in blue. Number of moles is equal to mass over formula mass. What mass do we have? 20 grams. And we've worked out the formula mass there, so we have 0.5 moles of sodium hydroxide. So we've got that one. Do we have the volume? Well, they tell us 500 cubic centimeters, but what's the problem? Concentration is always given as moles per cubic decimeter. So this must be converted to cubic decimeters. Now we know there are 1,000 centimeters cubed in one decimeter cubed. So I now can do my calculation. I have number of moles over there, 0 0.5, and I have a volume. In this case, I must convert it. So if I have 500 centimeters cubed, I go one, two, three places to get it as decimeter cubed. So 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.5, I have one mole per decimeter cubed. Can you see? It's the same as this one, but here I used 40 grams in a liter, while over here I used 20 grams in half the amount of water. Okay. Here's the next one. Still working with sodium hydroxide. So remember, the molecular mass of sodium hydroxide then is 40. Now, calculate this one's concentration. The formula stays the same. Concentration, number of moles divided by volume. Here is the volume. What's the catch? We must convert it to cubic decimeters. It's going to be 0 0.35 decimeters cubed. Okay, and we've got the molecular mass, the formula mass for sodium hydroxide. So the number of moles, now I'm going to do it in, okay, let me do it as a separate calculation. Uh, let's take number of moles is going to be mass over molecular or formula mass. What is the mass? 100 grams. The formula mass, we have 40. So how many moles do I have? 2.5 moles, all right? So here we have 2.5 moles divided by 0 0.35 decimeters cubed. And what is the concentration? 2.5 divided by 0 0.35. We have got 7.1 moles per decimeter cubed. All right, now we have a more difficult one. They want to know what mass of sodium hydroxide is needed <coughs> to make a 250 cubic centimeter sodium hydroxide solution with a concentration of 1.5 moles per cubic decimeter. Now we're still working with the same formula where we have number of moles is concentration times volume. Now they want to know what mass, but remember, if we have number of moles, we can find the mass, okay, by using 
mass is equal to number of moles times my formula mass. Okay, so the first step over here is to work out the number of moles. So we have a concentration, we have a volume, there's the concentration, there's the volume. I have 1.5 moles per decimeter cube, and I multiply it with this volume. But what's the catch? Volume must always be in cubic decimeters. So 0 0.25 decimeters cubed. This will give me an answer which is the number of moles, so it's 1.5 times 0.25 equals 0 0.375 moles. Now we don't want the number of moles, we are looking for the mass. Okay, so now we use this formula. We've got the number of moles, we can work out the molecular mass, Remember, we've been working with sodium hydroxide, so the molecular mass of sodium hydroxide is still 40. So what do we do? Number of moles, 0 0.375 times the molecular mass, 40, will give me my answer in grams. So I have 0 0.375 times 40 will equal 15 grams. So, there, if you dissolve 15 grams of sodium hydroxide in 250 cubic centimeters of water, we will have a solution with a concentration of one mole per cubic decimeter. Okay, now the next step is to go and do these calculations together with balanced chemical equation, because very seldom are they going to ask us if you've got 40 grams of calcium, how many moles have you got? They're going to put it into a calculation involving a balanced chemical equation. So this example that I have over here, we have got two moles of magnesium, will react with one mole of oxygen, and it will two, give me two moles of magnesium oxide. All right. So now the question says, how much oxygen will 12 grams of magnesium react with to form magnesium oxide? So our reaction lies between that and that. Okay, so what do we need from that? Well, we need the ratio, 2 to 1, the balancing ratio. Okay, so we say, I'm going to just rewrite the equation. 2 moles of magnesium will react with 1 mole of oxygen, and it's going to form 2 moles of magnesium oxide. Now, in this question, they don't ask anything about the magnesium oxide, so we're not really interested in that. We don't bother with that. You just ignore it. Okay, we want to work with the magnesium and the oxygen. So the first step, what have they given us? 12 grams of magnesium and they want to know how much oxygen will I need. All right. So now there is like specific steps that you have to take. From what they give you, in this case, they've given us a mass of magnesium. Let me just undo that. A mass of magnesium. So from what they've given us, we must work out number of moles. So, okay, over here, number of moles, what have they got? Mass, so which formula do we use? Mass over relative atomic mass. So we have 12 grams, and the relative atomic mass of magnesium is 24. 24, so I have 0 0.5 moles. 